chapter 5. The Bezhnikov looked perturbed. Last time, the Bezhnikov comes in after Raskolnikov. As you might recall last time, atoned with Sonia for his crimes. He explained and identified himself as the murderer of Lizaveta. And uh, whatever her name was. He did explain that he was the murderer, Elizaveta. And Sonia predictably forgives him and encourages him to come clean. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then Lebeznikov comes in. Lebeznikov looked perturbed. I've come to you, Sofia Semyonovna, he began. Excuse me, I thought I should find you, he said, addressing Raskolnikov suddenly. That is, I didn't mean anything of that sort. But I just thought Katerina Ivanovna has gone out of her mind. He blurted out, suddenly turning from a spawning cop and Sonia. Sonia screamed. At least it seems so, but you don't know what to do, you see. She came back. She seemed to have been turned out somewhere, perhaps beaten, so it seems at least. She had to run to your father's former chief. She didn't find him at home. He was dining at some other general's. Only fancy she rushed off there to the other generals, and imagine she was so persistent that she managed to get the chief to see her, have him fetched out from dinner, it seems. Yeah, she's sick, and I believe she just got kicked out <laughs> after her husband's funeral dinner. Uh, <laughs> her husband's uh, funeral dinner, she got into an argument with the landlady, Amelia, even open, I believe her name was, and someone threw something at the landlady, and she used that as an opportunity to kick out Katerina. She was already going through a lot as it was, so we'll have to see. According to her own story, she abused him and threw something at him. One may well believe it. How did she wasn't taken up? I can't understand. Now she's telling everyone, including Amelia Ivanovna, but it's difficult to understand her. She's screaming and flinging herself about. Oh yeah, she shouts that since everyone has abandoned her, she will take the children and go into the street with a barrel organ, and the children will sing and dance, and she too will collect money, and will go every day under the general's window to let everyone see well-born children, whose father was an official, begging in the street. She keeps beating the children, and they're all crying. She's teaching Lita to sing My Village, the boy to dance, playing the same. She is tearing up all the clothes, making them little caps like actors. She means to carry a tin basin and make it tinkle, instead of music. She won't listen to anything. Imagine the state of things. It's beyond anything. Veshnikov would have gone on, but Sonia, who had heard him almost breathless, snatched up her cloak and hat and ran out of the room, putting on her things as she went. Kolnikov followed her, and Lebeznikov came after him. She's certainly gone mad, he said to Raskolnikov, as they went out into the street. I didn't want to frighten Sofia Semyonovna, so I said it seemed like it. But there isn't a doubt of it. They say that in consumption, the tubercles sometimes occur in the brain. It's a pity I know nothing of medicine. I did try to persuade her, but she wouldn't listen. Did you talk to her about the tu tubercles? Not precisely the tubercles. Besides, she wouldn't have understood. But what I say is that if you convince a person logically that he has nothing to cry about, he'll stop crying. That's clear. Is it your conviction that he won't? Life would be too easy if it were so, answered Raskolnikov. Excuse me, excuse me. Of course it would be rather difficult for Katerina Ivanovna to understand. But do you know that in Paris, they have been conducting serious experiments as to the possibility of curing the insane? simply by logical argument. One professor there, a scientific man of standing, lately dead, believed in the possibility of such treatment. His idea was that there's nothing really wrong with the physical organism of the insane, and that insanity is, so to say, a logical mistake, an error of judgment, an incorrect view of things. And we know today that that's not the case, that people dealing with mental issues, depression, particularly schizophrenia, 
and psychosis actually just perceive the world differently. Like it has nothing to do with the person's decision making or judgment. Telling a a uh, person with major depressive disorder to just cheer up is just completely ignorant and goes to show that there's no understanding of what the person sees and experiences. It's like they actually see the world differently and feel things differently. It, it's not a decision at all, like as some people seem to erroneously think. He gradually showed the madman his error. Would you believe it? They say he was successful. But as he made use for douches too, how far success was due to that treatment it remains uncertain, so it seems at least. Cholnikov had long ceased to listen. Reaching the house where he lived, he nodded to Lebeshnikov and went in at the gate. Lebeshnikov woke up with a start, looked about him and hurried on. Cholnikov went into his little room and stood there, still in the middle of it. Why had he come back here? He looked at the yellow and tattered paper, the dust at his sofa. From the yard came a loud, continuous knocking. Someone seemed to be hammering. He went to the window, rose on tiptoe, and looked out into the yard for a long time with an air of absorbed attention. But the yard was empty, and he could not see who was hammering. From the house on the left, he saw some open windows. On the windowsills were pots of sickly-looking geraniums. Linen was hung out of the windows. He knew it all by heart. He turned away and sat down on the sofa. Never, never had he felt himself so fearfully alone. Yes, he felt once more that he would perhaps come to hate Sonia, now that he made her more miserable. Why had he gone to her to beg for her tears? What need had he to, po to poison her life? Hold the meanness of it. Because he simply did not care to... confess to anyone else <laughs> like that that's basically the long and short of it that and he has feelings for Sonia as we know I will remain alone he said resolutely and she shall not come to the prison five minutes later he raised his head with a strange smile that was a strange thought perhaps it really would be better in Siberia he thought suddenly he could not have said how long he sat there with vague thoughts surging through his mind all at once, the door opened and Dunya came in. At first she stood still and looked at him from the doorway, just as he had done at Sonia. Then she came in and sat down in the same place as yesterday, on the chair facing him. He looked silently and almost vacantly at her. Don't be angry, brother. I've only come for one minute, said Dunya. Her face looked thoughtful but not stern. Her eyes were bright and soft. She has recently broken up with uh, Lujan. Because of his disagreement with Raskolnikov. He saw that she, too, had come to him with love. Brother, now I know all. All. Dmitri Prokovich has explained and told me everything. They are worrying and persecuting you through a stupid and contemptible suspicion. Dmitri Prokovich told me that there is no danger, and that you are wrong in looking upon it with such horror. I don't think so, and I fully understand how indignant you must be and that that indignation may have a permanent effect on you. To think that Dunya does not yet know or realize that he actually did commit the murders. That's what I'm afraid of. As for your cutting yourself off from us, I don't judge you. I don't venture to judge you. And forgive me for having blamed you for it. I feel that I too, if I had so great a trouble, should keep away from everyone. I shall tell mother nothing of this, but I shall talk about you continually. She'll tell her from you that you will come very soon. Don't worry about her. I will set her mind to rest. But don't you try her too much. Come once at least. Remember that she is your mother. And now I've come simply to say, do you need to get up? But if she should need me or should need all my life or anything, call me and I'll come. Goodbye. She turned abruptly and went towards the door. Dunya! Raskolnikov stopped her and went towards her. That Rasmahin, Dmitri Prokovich, is a very good fellow. Dunya flushed slightly. Well, she asked, waiting a moment. He's competent, hardworking, honest, and capable of real love. Goodbye, Dunya. Well, he's trying to set up Rasmahin. He knows Rasmahin has feelings for Dunya. Dunya flushed crimson, and suddenly she took alarm. But what does it mean, brother? Are we really parting forever that you gave me such a parting message? Never mind. 
Goodbye. I turned away and walked to the window. She stood a moment, looked at him uneasily, and went out troubled. No, he was not cold to her. There was an instant, the very last one, and he longed to take her in his arms and say goodbye to her, and even to tell her, but he had not dared even to touch her hand. Afterwards, she may shudder when she remembers that I embraced her, and will feel that I stole her kiss. Would she stand the test? He went on a few minutes later to himself. No, she wouldn't. Girls like that can't stand things. They never do. And he thought of Sonia. There was a breath of fresh air from the window. The daylight was fading. He took up his cap and went out. He could not, of course, and would not consider how ill he was. But all this continual anxiety and agony of mind could not but affect him. And if he were not lying in high fever, it was perhaps just because this continual inner strain helped to keep him on his legs and in possession of his faculties. But this artificial excitement could not last long. He wandered aimlessly. The sun was setting. A special form of misery had begun to oppress him of late. There was nothing poignant, nothing acute about it, but there was a feeling of permanence, of eternity about it. it brought a foretaste of hopeless years of this cold leaden misery, a foretaste of an eternity on a square yard of space. Towards evening, the sensation usually began to weigh on him more heavily. With this idiotic, purely physical weakness, depending on the sunset or something, one can't help doing something stupid. He'll go to Dunia, as well as to Sonia, he muttered bitterly. He heard his name called, looked around. Lebeznikov rushed up to him. Only fancy, I've been to your room, looking for you. Only fancy, she's carried out her plan and taken away the children. Sofia Semyonovna and I have had a job to find them. She's wrapping on a frying pan and making the children dance. The children are crying. They keep stopping at the crossroads and in front of the shops. There's a crowd of fools running after them. Come along. And Sonia? Raskolnikov asked anxiously, hurrying after Lubezhnikov. Simply frantic. That is, it's not Sofia Semyonovna's frantic, but Katerina Ivanovna. That was Sofia Semyonovna's frantic, too. But Katerina Ivanovna is absolutely frantic. I tell you, she's quite mad. She'll be taken to the police. You can fancy what an effect that will have. They're all in the canal bend, near the bridge now. Not far from Sofia Semyonovna, it's quite close. Yeah, well, continuous ruin and, uh, you know, bad luck will do that to you. Like, she's sick, her husband died in a tragic accident. <laughs> They're practically broke. She's multiple kids and she just got evicted. You'd probably be ready to shoot yourself in the head after that, too. Um, what up? What up, Pure Gaming? Yo, yo, yo. Thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to follow. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, the delightful times of Kettering that you've known now. <laughs> She married a hopeless drunk that literally drank away all their money and then he got himself killed in a accident, car accident. Well, back in those days it was a carriage accident, but it's basically the same thing. Okay. Um, On the canal bank near the bridge, and not two houses away from the one where Sonia lodged, there was a crowd of people, consisting principally of gutter children. The hoarse, broken voice of Katerina Udomna could be heard from the bridge, and it certainly was a strange spectacle likely to attract a street crowd. Katerina Ivanovna in her old dress with a green shawl, wearing a torn straw hat, crushed in a hideous way on one side, was really frantic. She was exhausted and breathless. Her wasted, consumptive face looked more suffering than ever. And indeed, out of doors in the sunshine, the consumptive always looked worse than at home. But her excitement did not flag. Every moment her irritation grew more intense. She rushed at the children, shouted at them, coaxed them, told them before the crowd how to dance and how to sing. Began explaining to them why it was necessary. Driven to desperation, by their not understanding, beat them. And then she would make a rush at the crowd. She noticed any decently dressed person stopping to look. She immediately appealed to him to see what these children, from a genteel, one may say, aristocratic house, had been brought to. 
Yeah, some people will pass on their suffering either through elder abuse or children abuse. And I believe that's the case here. <laughs> She's trying to beat the devil of this life out of them, sadly. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Thank you very much. Yeah, just beat the devil out of them. <laughs> but they were like, they, they haven't done anything wrong. So it's like, they're just kids. Um, yeah, they're just kids born into a horrible situation. Not much else to say. Uh, let's see. If she heard... If she noticed any decently dressed person stopping to look, she immediately appealed to him to see what these children, from a genteel woman, say, aristocratic house, had been brought to. <laughs> a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> but in real life. I think this is actually a fictional book, but it may have been based on real events. I have no idea what it was like in <laughs> St. Petersburg at that time, but this book. Actually, I think it's Moscow. Yeah, I think it is Moscow. If she heard laughter during the crowd, she would rush at once at the scoffers and begin squabbling with them. Some people laughed, others shook their heads, but everyone felt curious at the sight of the mad woman with frightened children. The frying pan of which Leshnikov had spoken was not there. At least Raskolnikov did not see it. But instead of rapping on the pan, Katerina Ivanovna began clapping her wasted hands, and she made Lida and Kolya dance and point to sing. She too joined the singing, but wrote down at the second note with a fearful cough, which made her curse in despair and even shed tears. What made her most furious was the weeping and terror of Kolya and Lida. Some effort had been made to dress the children up as street singers that are dressed. The boy had on a turban made of something red and white to look like a Turk. There had been no costume for Lita. She simply had a red knitted cap, or rather a night cap, that had belonged to Marmoladov, decorated with a broken piece of white ostrich feather, which had been Katerina Ivanovna's grandmother, uh, Katerina Ivanovna's grandmother's, and had been preserved as a family possession. Like, I would say kids you practice birth control because kids will never practically never solve your problems they will pretty much only add to them so if you're if your life is in ruin and you have a bunch of kids like it's it's only gonna add to the stress and frustration as you try to provide for the kids and if you don't have the ability to it's gonna suck for everyone involved so there we go birth control uh 30 again Possession. Polenka was in her everyday dress. She looked in timid perplexity at her mother, kept at her side, hiding her tears. She dimly realized her mother's condition and looked uneasily about her. Yeah, she's probably gonna die soon. She's been sick for most of this novel, coughing up blood, and she has not been doing well. Even before like her husband dying, she was not doing well. She was terribly frightened at the street in the crowd. Sonia followed Katerina Ivanovna, weeping and beseeching her to return home. But Katerina Ivanovna was not to be persuaded. Leave off, Sonia, leave off, she shouted, speaking fast, pounding and coughing. You don't know what you're ask, what you ask. You're like a child. I've told you before that I'm not coming back to that drunken German. Let everyone, let all Petersburg, okay, yeah, it is Petersburg. See the children begging in the streets. Though their father was an honorable man who served all his life in truth and fidelity, and one may say died in the service. Uh, yeah, not quite. Marmaladov was a, a drunk. He, he was an alcoholic. And it's amazing he didn't drink himself to death. In a way, he kind of did. And, uh... Yeah, it was... His was not an honorable death. Like, like in modern times, it would be like dr dying in a drunk driving accident. Like, it, it's not an honorable way to die, can be put. 
Bullets. Yeah, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> Can't really even know him had by now invented this fantastic story and thoroughly bleat. Let that wretch of a general see it. You're silly, Sonya. What have we beat? Tell me that. We've worried you enough. I won't go on go on so. <sighs> Rojan Romanovich, is that you? She cried, seeing where Scotland Cobb and rushing up to him. Explain to this silly girl, please, that nothing better could be done. Even organ grinders earn their living, and everyone will see at once that we are different, that we are an honorable and bereaved family reduced to beggary, and that General would lose his post, you see. We shall perform under his windows every day, and if the Tsar drives by, I'll fall on my knees, put the children before me, show them to him, and say, Defend us, Father. He is the father of the fatherless. He is merciful. I'll protect us, you see. And that wretch of a general, be the Tenebu droid. Kolya, you'll dance again. Why are you whimpering? Whimpering again? What are you afraid of, stupid? Goodness, what am I to do with them, Rojan Romanovich? Yeah, they are not... They're not like gifts you buy in a store. That you cannot return them without committing a serious crime. So, you gotta think twice on that one. I guess nowadays you can turn them into child protective services, I guess. Or, you know, foster care. Put them up for adoption, I guess. Worst case scenario. If you only knew how stupid they are. What's one to do with such children? She almost cried herself, which did not stop her uninterrupted, wrapped full of talk, pointing to the crying children. As Kolnikov tried to persuade her to go home, he, yeah, she has no home to go back to, as of the events of last chapter, he even said, hoping to work on her vanity, that it was unseemly fair for her to be wandering about the streets like an organ grinder, and she was intending to become the principal of a boarding school. Boarding school? <laughs> Castle in the air, cried Katerina Ivanovna, her laugh ending in a cough. No, Rojan Romanovich, that dream is over. All have forsaken us. And that general, you know, Rojan Romanovich, I threw an inkpot at him, happened to be standing in the waiting room by the paper where you signed your name. I wrote my name, threw it at him, and ran away. What scoundrels, the scoundrels, but enough of them. Now I'll provide for the children myself. I won't bow down to anybody. She's had to bear enough for us. She pointed to Sonia. Yeah, big sad on that one, big sad. Polenka, how much have you got? Show me. But only two farthings? Oh, the mean wretches. They give us nothing, only run after us, putting their tongues out. Uh, such, <laughs> such is the tragic side of entertaining. It doesn't always pay. It doesn't always pay. I think that's why it's best to, to do your own thing and eventually, hopefully, it'll start paying off. If people catch on. But, um, yeah. I think it helps to love what you do first. Treat it like a hobby, and then, you know, maybe someday you'll be able to make it into a living. Someday. What is that blockhead laughing at? She pointed to the man in the crowd. It's all because Kolya here is so stupid. I said she would bother with him. Just remember, the apple does not fall far from the tree. The expression. So if you're going to call your kids dumb, you may want to think twice. Look in the mirror first. What do you want, Blanca? And her, her decision making seems to support that theory. Tell me in French. Parlez-moi Francois. Why, I've taught you, you know, some phrases. How are you to show that you're a good family? Or brought up children? Not at all like other organ grinders. You're not going to have a Punch and Judy show in the street. But to sing a genteel song. Ah yes, what are we to sing? You keep putting me out, but we, you see, we are standing here, Rojan Romanovich, to find something to sing and get money. Something Koya can dance to, for as you can fancy, our performance is all impromptu. We must talk it over and rehearse it all thoroughly. And then we shall go to Nevsky, where there are more people of good society, and we shall be noticed at once. 
Yeah, money is a horrible reason to do anything, basically. Don't do anything for money, because <laughs> it's never going to work out. Lita knows my village only. Nothing but my village. And everyone sings that. It's like the... What's it called? Like, uh... What's it called in the song? Taylor Swift. It's Taylor Swift's like most popular song. Um, yeah, not a fan, but it's like it's like that Taylor Swift song, Blank Space. It's like everyone knows that song. It's the only song she knows. <laughs> Must sing something far more genteel. Well, have you thought of anything, Polenka? If only you'd help your mother. My memory's quite gone, or I should have thought some thought of something. You really can't sing a husser. Let us sing in French. Sing Seuss. I have taught it you. I have taught it you. And as it is in French, people will see at once that you're children of good family. And that would be much more touching. You might sing Marlboro's in that ten gear. But it's quite a child song and is sung as a lullaby in all the aristocratic houses. Like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something. Are the wheels on the bus go round and round? <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe those would be better comparisons. Um I know that in Leo Tolstoy's time that only the Russian royalty speak French. Like, all the commoners spoke Russian only. And I wonder if that was still the case in Fedor's time. Like, only the rich and well-to-do Russians from nobility know how to speak French. Like, it's a sign of aristocracy. It might have still been the case, because... Uh, sometimes the more things change, the more they stay the same. Like, it might have still been that way 50 years later. Marlboro Sen Vetten Gear, Nisette Quan Riv Yendra. She began singing. But no, better sing Sin Quas. Now, Chloe, your hands on your hips. Make haste, and you, Lita. Keep turning the other way. Blink out, we'll sing and clap our hands. Sing soi, sing soi, pour monter notre ménage. <coughs> Set your dress straight, Polenka. Slip down on your shoulders. She observed, panting from coughing. Now it's particularly necessary to behave nicely and genteely, that all may see that you're well-born children. I said at the time that the bodice should be cut longer. You made it two widths. It was your fault, Sonia, with your advice to make it shorter. And now you see the child is quite deformed by it. Why, you're all crying again. What's the matter, stupids? Come, cool, you'll begin. Make haste, make haste. What an unbearable child. You can always tell when someone's having a hard time when they're becoming more abusive. <laughs> you're dumb, you're dumb. Uh... The sad part is the kids are trying as hard as they can, but pff, there's not much they can fix this wreck. That, that much is true.
do 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 Gotta turn the page. Sing swap, sing swap. Policeman again. What do you want? Policeman was indeed forcing his way through the crowd. At that moment, a gentleman in civilian uniform and an overcoat, a solid-looking official of about 50 with a decoration on his neck, which delighted Katerina Ivanovna and had its effect on the policeman, approached and without a word handed her a green three-ruble note. His face wore a look of genuine sympathy. Katerina Ivanovna took it and gave him a polite, even ceremonious bow. I thank you, honored sir, she began loftily. The causes that have induced us. I take the money, Polenka. You see... There are generous and honorable people who are ready to help a poor gentlewoman in distress. You see, honored sir, these orphans of good family, I might even say of aristocratic connections, and that wretch of a general sat eating grew, and stamped at my disturbing him. Your Excellency, I said, protect the orphans, for you, my late husband, Semyon Zaharovich, on the very day of his death, the basis of scoundrels slandered his only daughter that policeman again protect me she cried to the official why is that policeman edging up to me we've only just run away from one of them what do you want fool it's forbidden in the streets you mustn't make a disturbance it's your making a disturbance it's just the same as if i were grinding an organ what business is it of yours he's like uh miss i'm trying to do my job actually <laughs> you have to get a license for an organ and you haven't got one, and in that way you collect a crowd. Where do you lodge? He's like, right now, nowhere, actually. <laughs> what, a license? Wait, old Katerina, even though not, I buried my husband today. What need of a license? Com and this, this poor cop is like, <laughs> he's like just trying his best. He's like, uh, I knew I should have been anything else. <laughs> Get what you get if you're gaming. For the uh, grand tour, you gotta get to know me better, okay? That's how it goes. Okay, look. Uh, I will escort you. This is no place for you in the crowd. You're ill. Aren't, sir? Honored sir, you don't know, screamed Katerina Ivanovna. We are going to the Nevsky. Sonia, Sonia, where is she? She is crying too. What's the matter with you all? Kolya, Lita, where are you going? She cried suddenly in alarm. Oh, silly children, Kolya, Lita. Where are they off to? <clears throat> Kolya and Lita, scared out of their wits by the crowd and their mother's mad pranks, suddenly seized each other by the hands and ran off at the sight of the policeman who wanted to take them away somewhere. That might be what's best, actually. <laughs> he might be able to offer them some social services or something that they could use to get off the actual street. Weeping and wailing, poor Katerina even opened and ran after them. She was a piteous and unseemly spectacle as she ran, weeping and panting for breath. Sonia and Polenka rushed after them. Bring them back. Bring them back, Sonia. Stupid, ungrateful children. Polenka, catch them. It's for your sakes, I... She stumbled as she ran and fell down. Like, it's hard to say. Like, should we be sympathetic toward Katerina Ivanovna? Should we be critical of her? It's just, I would say it's just sad to see. Sad to see, for sure. She cut herself. She's bleeding. Oh, dear, cried Sonia, bending over her. And poor Sonia, she's... <laughs> she's been through a lot. She's seen a lot. Too. She might not have served in any war, but she served in the war of the streets, so... <laughs> she's, yeah, she's been through quite a bit. All ran up and crowded around. Raskolnikov and Lebeznikov were the first at her side. The official, too, hastened up. 
and beside, behind him the policeman who muttered, Brother, father, with a gesture of impatience, feeling that the job was going to be a troublesome one. Pass on, pass on, he said to the crowd. I press forward. She's dying, someone shouted. She's gone out of her mind, said another. Lord have mercy upon us, said the woman, crossing herself. Have they caught the little girl and the boy? They're being brought back. The other one's got them. Ah, the naughty imps. And what's really sad is that these kids are completely well behaved. Like, she's like beating them, screaming at them, insulting them, calling them all kinds of names, and they're basically just, just trying their best to dance and sing and entertain and crying the whole time. That's the sad. That's the sad part. That, that's probably the saddest part. Is how she's treating her kids in this situation. When they examined Katerina Ivanovna carefully, they saw that she had not cut herself against a stone, as Sonia thought, but that the blood that stained the pavement red was from her chest. And yeah, she's just been coughing up blood this entire time. Seen that before, muttered the official to Raskolnikov and Lebeshnikov. That's consumption. The blood flows and chokes the patient. I saw the same thing with a relative of my own not long ago. Nearly a pint of blood, all in a minute. What's to be done, though? She's dying. This way, this way, to my room, Sonia implored. I live here. See that house the second from here? Come to me. Make haste. She turned from one to the other. Send for the doctor. Oh, dear. Thanks to the official's efforts, this plan was adopted, and the policeman even helping to carry Katerina Ivanovna. She was carried to Sonia's room almost unconscious and laid on the bed. The blood was still flowing, but she seemed to be coming to herself. Raskolnikov, Lebeshnikov, and the official accompanied Sonia into the room, or followed by the policeman. They first drove back the crowd, which followed to the very door. Polenka came in holding Kolya and Lita, who were trembling and weeping. Several persons came in, too, from the Capernaum's room. The landlord, the lame one-eyed man, has a strange appearance with whiskers and hair that stood up like a brush. His wife, a woman with an everlasting, scared expression, and several open-mouthed children with wonderful, wonderstruck faces. Among these, Ferdglov suddenly made his appearance. I believe that's the lawyer, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he might be like, where? What's he doing here? Uh, I'm from SoCal. Up here. San Bernardino. Okay. Just calling cop looked at him with surprise, not understanding where he'd come from and not having noticed him in the crowd. The doctor and priest were spoken of. I think this is a typo. I think it's supposed to be were. Yeah, because war does not... Like, I wear... I wore yesterday. Like, the word war doesn't actually make sense in this context. Yeah, it must be were, W-E-R-E, -E, but it's spelled war for some reason. Must be a typo. I think it, yeah, it should be were spoken of. The official whispered to Raskolnikov that he thought it was too late now for the doctor, but he ordered him to be sent for. Kapernaumov ran himself. Meanwhile, Kennery Ivanovna had regained her breath. The bleeding ceased for a time. She looked with sick but intent and penetrating eyes at Sonia, who stood pale and trembling, wiping the sweat from her brow with a handkerchief. At last, she asked to be raised. They sat her up on the bed, supporting her on both sides. Where are the children, she said in a faint voice. You brought them, Polenka? Oh, the sillies. Why did you run away? Ugh. Once more, her parched lips were covered with blood. She moved her eyes, looking about her. So that's how you live, Sonia. Never once have I been in your room. She looked at her with a face of suffering. We have been your ruin, Sonia. Polenka, Lita, Kolya, come here. Well, here they are, Sonia. Take them all. 
I hand them over to you. I've had enough. The ball is over. <laughs> like, she may not have a choice. Like, she's actually dying. Like, like you're actually dying. You may not, you may not have much choice. Lay me down. Let me die in peace. Laid her back on the pillow. What, the priest? I don't want him. You haven't got a ruble to spare. I have no sins. God must forgive me without that. He knows how I have suffered. And if he won't forgive me, I don't care. She sank more and more into uneasy delirium. At times she shuddered, turned her eyes from side to side, recognizing everyone for a minute, but at once sank into delirium again. Her breathing was hoarse and difficult. There was a sort of rattle in her throat. I said to him, Your Excellency, she ejaculated, gasping after each word. That Amelia Lugovna, Vida, uh, Kolya, hands on your hips, make haste. Guizas, Guizas, pass the Basque. Yeah, I don't understand what some of these words mean. Tap with your heels, be graceful, child. Du hast dementen und perlen. What next? That's the thing to sing. Du hast de schonsten eigen madchen, was willst du mehr? I think this is German. No, it sounds French, actually. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it must be French. What an idea. It was Will Stimmer. What things the fool invents. Ah, uh, yes. In the heat of midday, in the Vale of Dagestan. Dagestan. <sighs> How I loved it. I loved that song to distraction, Polenka. Your father, you know, used to sing it when we were engaged. Oh, those days. That's the thing for us to sing. How does it go? I forgot. Remind me, how was it? She was violently excited and tried to sit up. At last, in a horribly hoarse, broken voice, she began, shrieking and gasping at every word with a look of growing terror. In the heat of midday, in the veil of Dagestan, with lead in my breast. Your Excellency, she wailed suddenly with a heart-rending scream and a flood of tears. Protect the orphans. You've been their father's guest. One may say aristocratic. She started regaining consciousness. And he gazed it all with a sort of terror. But at once recognized Sonia. Sonia, Sonia, she articulated softly and caressingly. As though surprised to find her there. Sonia, darling, are you here too? As a matter of fact, Prime... You can check out my TikTok to Storm Show. Now I've been streaming for a while. Yeah, Storm Show. There should be a video on there. You may want to look at. Yeah, you may be interested in seeing that I posted recently. Okay. <laughs> My pinky is a little bit crunched because for a year I wore chucks. And it's like, it was like a minor Chinese foot binding that I had. Ever since then I've worn only wide shoes. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been streaming for a while. I think this year, earlier this year is when I started. I think it was like February, March maybe. Maybe earlier than that. Yeah, if you look, actually look on my YouTube Two Stormer Show, you can find videos going back. I think at least as early as April, maybe earlier. Yeah, you can find all kinds of content on there too. Stormer Show YouTube. And I would appreciate it if you could subscribe too, because I'm looking for subscribers. This video should be posted there too, once it becomes a VOD. Sonia, she articulated softly and caressingly, as though surprised to find her there. Sonia, darling, are you here too? The lifters are up again. Enough. It's over. Farewell, poor thing. I'm done for, I'm broken, she cried with vindictive despair, and her head fell heavily back on the pillow. She 
She sank into unconsciousness again, but this time it did not last long. Her pale yellow wasted face dropped back. Her mouth fell open. Her legs moved convulsively. She gave a deep, deep sigh and died. Sonia fell upon her, flung her arms about her, and remained motionless with her head pressed to the dead woman's wasted bosom. Lenka threw herself at her mother's feet, kissing them and weeping violently. Though Kolya and Lita did not understand what had happened, they had a feeling that it was something terrible. They put their hands on each other's little shoulders, stared straight at one another, and both at once opened their mouths and began screaming. They were both still in their fancy dress, one in a turban, the other in a cap with the ostrich feather. Yeah, I feel bad for Sonia, for sure. Gotta plug my phone in. Nine. Actually, I can't read even know that. Sorry. Although she has actually died in a book. She has passed on. Her suffering has been completed. How did the certificate of marriage come to be on the bed beside Katerina Ivanovna? It lay there by the pillow. Raskolnikov saw it. He walked away to the window. Lebeznikov skipped up to him. She's dead, he said. Rodion Romanovich, I must have two words with you, said Svergulov, coming up to them. I wonder if it's going to be about the murders. Is it going to be about Katerina's or is it going to be about the murders? Probably the murders. Lebeznikov at once made room for him and delicately withdrew. Svergulov drew Raskolnikov further away. I will undertake all the arrangements, the funeral and that. Okay. You know, it's a question of money, and as I told you, I have plenty to spare. Oh, wait. Is Svergulov the dude that's trying to get with Dunya? I know, sometimes they get the name switched around, like... Svergulov's either the lawyer or the one who's trying to get with Dunya. I can't remember. I think he's the one who's trying to get with Dunya. I need to be right back. I gotta use the bathroom. Thank you for watching. Feel better now. Uh, thank you, Pure. You can encourage everyone else and stuff too. I appreciate that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm size ten and a half men's. Okie dokie. I tend to wear elevens. Take all the arrangements. The funeral and that. You know, it's a question of money, and as I told you, I have plenty to spare. I'll put those two little ones in Planka into some good orphan asylum. I will settle 1,500 rubles to be paid to each on coming of age, so that Sofia Semyonovna need have no anxiety about them. And I will pull her out of the mud, too, for she's a good girl, isn't she? So tell Abdocha Romanovna that is how I am spending her 10,000. can't really remember because I think he was giving the money to to Dunya yes it, it was part of like a 
I don't know, I can't remember exactly, like it was like an IOU or something. Yeah, something like that. Hard to say why, but yeah, it looks like he's going to use that money to care for uh, caring his family, so that's, that's awesome. Uh, that's completely, completely awesome. Like, that's probably one of the nicest things anyone's book has done for anyone else. What is your motive for such benevolence? Asked for Skolnikov. <laughs> he only asked this question because he couldn't see himself doing anything like this. He's like, why do you... Why are you nice? What the heck? How do you skeptical person? Asked for love. Yeah, this must be the guy who's trying to get with Junya. The, the old landlord. His wife died. So he's looking to... Three up, as they say. And he's trying to do it with his calling cop sister. I told you that I have no need of that money. Won't you admit that it's simply done from humanity? She wasn't a louse, you know. He pointed to the corner where the dead woman lay. Was she like some old pawnbroker woman? Come, you'll agree. Is illusion to go on living and doing wicked things, or is she to die? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure illusion's going to keep going on. If I didn't help them, Plank would go the same way. He said this with an air of a sort of gay-winking slyness, keeping his eyes fixed on Raskolnikov, who turned white and cold, hearing his own phrases spoken to Sonia. He quickly stepped back and looked wildly at Sverdlov. How do you know? He whispered, hardly able to breathe. Why well, I lodge here at Madame Reslich's, the other side of the wall. Here's Kapernamov, and there lives Madame Reslich, an old and devoted friend of mine. I'm a neighbor. You? Yes, continues Fertilov, shaking with laughter. I assure you on my honor, dear Rodion Romanovich, that you have interested me enormously. I told you we should become friends. I foretold it. Well, here we have. And you will see what an accommodating person I am. You'll see that you can get on with me. Like he's, he has to reassure Raskolnikov because Raskolnikov is not the most social. And so you kind of have to be a type A personality to to befriend him. Illusion failed, failed badly. And yeah, Ras Rasmussen's that kind of guy, so that's why it works. Uh, no, I don't have Instagram. I used to a long time ago and I deleted it. If I did have an Instagram, it would probably be mostly of my traveling. I may uh, have an Instagram again at some point to just document my travel experiences, but um, yeah, not, not currently. No, I don't have one. I deleted it a long time ago because I saw it as a tribute to vanity. Okay, okay. So that is going to do it for Chapter 5, Part 5 of War and Peace. I'll be back with Phoenix Wright and Fallout 76 today. And we should also have an exercise stream later today, too. So please make sure you're following if you don't want to miss those streams for more content. And of course, thank you for watching, and thank you, Prime, for the chat. That does also help the show. If you can't donate, follow helps, the view helps, the chat helps, share helps, and yes, even just watching helps. So thank you so much. All right, signing off, and I'll be back after a quick break with my uh, gameplay streams and exercise stream for today. So stay tuned.